Hey guys, welcome to our channel, The Bright Storyteller. Today, I'm going to tell you about the Russian movie called The Last Warrior. It's the third in the series, spoilers ahead. The film begins with the campaign of Ivan and the Warriors, led by Finnist the Clear Falcon. Finnist, being the strongest of the squad, makes fun of Ivan, who doesn't have any superpowers. The warriors are unexpectedly attacked by a strange doe monster called Kalabok. After successfully capturing the monster, who was pillaging the village cattle, Ivan returns to his middle-aged home, which is furnished with modern technology he had brought from the future. He is tired of life in the conditions of ancient Russia. He often uses his magical sword to return to modern Moscow. dreaming of one day moving there with his Vasilisa, the love of his life, who lives in this mystical world. However, she does not approve of this idea. A Russian folktale character by the name of Belogori is holding a competition in order to identify the best warrior. All participants except Finnist fail the obstacle course. At this point, Ivan is tired of Finnist always mocking him and flirting with his old lady Vasilisa. Therefore, he decides to take part in the competition in order to put Finnist in his place. Before competing, Ivan tries to cross realms to return to Moscow, but the power of the magical sword expires and the portal does not open. If Finnist passed the obstacle course with the help of strength and dexterity, then Naidenov, another folktale character, successfully does this using ingenuity and resourcefulness. <laughs> However, the competition is interrupted by two villains named Varvara and Galina, who arrive at the feast to take the magical sword from Ilya, the father of Ivan. They bewitch the heroes and put living roots on the village, after which a battle ensues. Although the villains gain the upper hand, the heroes battle the protagonist with the help of Finnist and Kalabok and manage to escape, taking with them the magical sword. During the fight, the story shows flashbacks of a sick orphan girl and a peasant woman who tends to her care. The girl had pricked her finger on a magical flower and her face changed colors. Both the woman and the girl visited a witch named Baba Yaga, who says that the curse cannot be lifted and the girl should be drowned. The woman ignores the advice and by the end of the night, both the woman and the girl become cursed and fall under the spell of an evil being. In the next scene, the heroes are traveling and discussing their game plan. Baba Yaga says that she had previously seen magic like this from a good magician named Belagor. Having a near-death experience, Belagor decided to become immortal and for this he forged a magical sword. However, his disciple Mikula contacted an evil force and decided to take immortality for himself. He betrayed his teacher Belagor and killed him. Ironically, the Dark Force did not come soon Belagor. Offended by the people who did not appreciate him and by his disciples' betrayal, Belagor became an evil creature in the form of a tree root named Ragalop. To return to his normal form, he needed the magical sword. And to search for the sword, he began to turn people into his servants. But of all his victims, only Galina and Varvara could survive the trials. After gaining immortality, Belagor's disciple became known as Kashe Bismertne, or Immortal Bones in English. Only he knows how to defeat Ragalop. But first, the heroes have to get Kashe out of the land of the dead. And to get there, the characters use a whale fish. That's right, a whale fish, which can only be controlled by a person with heroic strength. <laughs> Finnist, being the most powerful in the group, once again gets to bask in all the glory, but wait. Ivan steals magic berries from the witch Baba Yaga. The berries give him incredible power and strength. After Ivan consumes the berries, he pretends that he has finally gained heroic strength through his bravery. Oh. 
Reaching the land of the dead, they come upon a giant head which is guarding the door to the underworld, similar to the one in the Aladdin movie. To enter the underworld, the heroes must watch answer three different questions. Ivan tricks the guardian in his own game and enters through the door in search of Cachet the Immortal. To his surprise, Ivan encounters his father, who was recently killed by the hands of Rogolop. More like Roots, because he obviously doesn't have hands. Out of nowhere appears Cachet, who is handed a glowing stone which he can use to leave the underworld. After leaving the land of the dead, Cachet is suffering from what seems to be dementia. After a few good smacks on the head, he recollects his memory and states that Ragalob can be killed by cutting the stone under from which he was buried. On the way back, Ivan continues to gobble up the magical berries in order to show off his special powers. On the way to Belgorod, Ivan confesses to Vasilisa that the magic sword has lost its power. She offers to put the sword back into the ground, something King Arthur never did. This way the sword can return all its magical properties. In the morning, barbarians overtake the heroes with an army and inflict Finnist with a heavy wound. On top of that, Ivan has eaten all the berries and no longer has his powers. The heroes are forced to flee, and the magical sword is now in the hands of Varvara, the protagonist. After escaping battle, Ivan quarrels with Vasilisa and is left alone with Kalabok for a doom and gloom moment. The team rushes to Belagori in hopes of saving Finnist with the help of living water. In the meantime, Ragalob's servant Galina almost kills Varvara who is trying to keep the sword away from her rivals. She fails and drops the sword from the sky into the forest. A big ogre looking dude named Chudayudo finds it and brings it to Ivan. Then Ivan, Kalabok and Chudayudo head to their final batter, battle. Together with them are the remaining warriors and Finnist himself. During the fight, Varvara turns into an owl and is eaten by Kalabok. What a tasty snack. Suddenly, Cachet recalls that if you cut the stone with the magical sword, Ragalop will not die, but on the contrary will be freed. Unfortunately, the stone has been destroyed and out the former white magician comes. Ragalop uses his magical roots to bind the heroes and put them deep underground. Next is Ivan, but wait. Ivan mentally meets with his dead father where he has an epiphany. A heroic strength awakens in him. Together with Finnist and Kalabok, he fights with Ragalop, whose strength is in the ground on which he stands. Ivan cuts a portal with his sword and sends the monster to modern Moscow, where there is an asphalt instead of earth. Ragalop dies and everyone is freed. Svetazor forces Galina to flee and Ivan proposes to Vasilisa. Galina plunges into the Black River to get evil powers. The post credit scene shows that many years ago Ilya Marumets, the father of Ivan, lives with his wife Galia. This is the same woman who was bewitched by Ragalop in the flashback. Presumably she is the mother of Varvara and the biological mother of Ivan. Thanks for watching our channel. If you enjoyed this recap, hit the like button and subscribe to watch more videos like this.